When games get announced, they usually advertise most things that are going to be included. Take Stray for example, a game where you play as a cat and do package delivery. The game was advertised like that and is like that in reality. But sometimes games are shown off and the promises they give aren't reality. So stay tuned to today's video as we discuss a few games that promised everything and delivered nothing. First up, Watch Dogs. Watch Dogs was easily one of the biggest failures in marketing, and it's not even close. When the game was originally shown off all the way back in 2012 at E3, it looked phenomenal. The graphics were out of this world, and the gameplay looked amazing. Sadly, when the game released, the game was not even close to the original footage. In fact, it looked like a completely different game. Saying fans were disappointed would be an understatement. This led to many fans attacking the developers online and Ubisoft for lying to get pre-orders. Even the PC version didn't look as good as the original demos, meaning that the original trailer was nothing but fake gameplay. Even after the people realized the game didn't look great, they were even more disappointed by the gameplay. Watch Dogs originally advertised itself as a game where you could become a master jacker, but all it turned out to be was a generic open world game with limited hacking. They couldn't even get the driving right. Watch Dogs failed in many different ways, but most important, failed to capture the right audience. Surprisingly, the game some Somehow got a sequel, which was a little better and fleshed out the gameplay a little more. Then Watch Dogs Legion launched. But that flopped as well because of poor and misleading marketing. Clearly, this franchise is just haunted. Next, Mighty Number no. 9. Mighty Number no. 9 was a massive game set to bring back classic Mega Man to its devoted fan base. The Mega Man community had been watching an original style Mega Man game for years, but all that Capcom released were the modern versions of the character. This kickstarted project by some of the original Mega Man developers was set to be a return to form, but with a new skin. The game seemed pretty great, and it was even away from Capcom's copyright. All good, right? Well, the game went through development hell on Kickstarter, with a multitude of delays all the time. When the goals were reached, the game would be delayed once again. When the game finally released, it was terrible. The game was basically a fan game with a little more budget, and it just didn't fit what was advertised. Fans hated this game, and wished that they never put their own money into back such a terrible project. And our last game, No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky was easily the biggest failure in gaming history. It was such a milestone of a game, and it was all too good to be true. The hype train behind this game was insane, spanning millions of tweets, videos, and threads. Everyone was super hyped to get their hands on this game. Interviews with one of the game's marketing managers, Sean Murray, were all over the internet. He went on many gaming sites, as well as some mainstream programs in America, to advertise No Man's Sky and what it had to offer. The game was meant to be a massive open-world space exploration game, with procedurally generated planets, all with crazy animals and beasts to find. There were many planets with bosses, and also some special planets to find. Hello Games was obsessed with keeping an air of mystery about the game, and wouldn't give simple answers about what features to expect in the game. So of course, people were going to speculate. Not only that, but managing director Sean Murray promised several features that just never made it to the full game. The trailers also blew a similar horn to Spore, with promises like 18 quintillion planets and an entire galaxy created by procedural generation. Our minds pictured the epic space battles we would get into, the alien species we would meet, and the wondrous journey to discover what was at the center of the universe. What we didn't picture was pointing a laser at rocks for several hours, gathering materials to survive, and moving from planet to planet, with none of them having any real character or anything of note at all. Combine that with the complete mess of an inventory system, boring gameplay, and the joke found at the center of the universe, it's safe to say that No Man's Sky literally promised the universe and delivered pointing lasers at rocks. And that's the end of our list. What did you think about the three games we spoke about today? Let us know down in the comment section below. Also, tell us if there are any other games you wished we had covered. And now, stay tuned for some more gaming news and information from the last few weeks. Next, details on Hogwarts' legacy have been released. Now that the game has an official release date, and we know that the entire project is going forward as planned, we can finally delve into what exactly this Hogwarts game might entail. We don't really know the plot at all, or know anything about the story, but we do know some things about the houses, and what they might mean for the gameplay. It looks like you are able to explore the entirety of Hogwarts on your adventure, from the common rooms to even interacting with many characters and companions across the game. It's looking great so far, however, one thing is the houses. People want to know more about what each house means for the story, the gameplay, and your overall experience whilst playing Hogwarts Legacy. So, from what we know,
No, there are the main houses from the Harry Potter series, Gryffindor, Slytherin, Ravenclaw, and of course Hufflepuff. These houses can be chosen from the start of the game and will dictate your gameplay and story throughout your time with Hogwarts Legacy. Here are the descriptions we have of each house. Gryffindor House has many common rooms across Hogwarts, and they are filled with sofas, rugs, and embroidered with gold and red patterns matching the house's symbol. Students that are heading into Gryffindor have the traits of courage, chivalry, confidence, and bravery. Slytherin House is next, and its common rooms are much darker with open spaces. Everything is tinted with green and plants to match. If you end up choosing Slytherin, your character will have the traits of determination, ambition, resourcefulness, and of course, they are a clever one. Ravenclaw House has many super amazing rooms decorated with stars, and they are all filled with books and blue lamps. Choosing Ravenclaw means you have wisdom and wit, but are also very intelligent and want to learn new things on your adventure in Hogwarts Legacy. Finally, we have the Hufflepuff House. This house has its common rooms in the basement area, and they are filled with lamps, amazing lighting, and an overall homely feel. If you are set on choosing Hufflepuff, your character is going to be interested in justice and loyalty, but they are also very patient and enthusiastic for more work. And that is everything we currently know about the four houses in Hogwarts Legacy. We don't know any more about how the houses will affect your gameplay or time with the game, but choosing the right house is going to be a very big and monumental step for any player of Hogwarts Legacy. What do you think? And finally, Sonic Frontiers isn't looking great. The final piece of this video isn't some great news at all. When an open world Sonic game was announced earlier this year, fans were super happy. We haven't had many great modern Sonic games as of the last few years, and fans were just waiting for a new game to take over the Sonic scene. Sonic Frontiers was announced as an open world Sonic game, and fans compared it to something like Breath of the Wild or even Genshin Impact. From what we initially saw from screenshots, the game graphically looked great but was lacking enemies and areas to explore. When gameplay finally released a few days ago, fans were instantly disappointed. The game looked boring, flat, and just not great at all. The combat was very simple, and Sonic was basically a race car with no momentum. Players have been wanting Sonic to act more like a pinball with raising and falling momentum, not a race car that just goes to maximum speed and carries on until the player stops. The game just doesn't look great at all, and we need more from it. Maybe the story is going to be good, but we doubt that with the track record of Sonic in the past. At least the movies are looking pretty good right now. What do you think about all of this? Let us know down below. And that's the end of today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed this latest video. If you did, would you please let us know down in the comment section below? It would be very helpful. Make sure to like the video, comment down below, and of course subscribe to the channel with the notification bell rung. Thank you for watching today's video. Bye!